I've come to the University of Glasgow to their wind tunnel facility and I've met up with Richard Green. Richard, could you tell us a little bit about this? Uh -huh. Yes, this is the this is the nine foot by seven foot uh, low speed wind tunnel that we operate here at the University of Glasgow. Uh, we're in the control room, which is uh, where all the all the clever work's done, and the wind tunnel circuit is uh, is around us. Uh, this wind tunnel used to be based um, down at De Havilland in in Hatfield, uh, but uh, we've had it up here in Glasgow since um, the early to mid 1990s, and uh, it's now part of the uh, United Kingdom National Wind Tunnel Facility. Could you actually take us inside the tunnel now? Yes, I can do that. I'll just check that the flow's off. Press the stop button. Yeah, flow's off. Here we go. Um, this is the working section of the wind tunnel. Uh, this is where we place the wind tunnel models. I'm, I'm holding onto an aircraft wing, which was uh, a part of an aircraft model that was tested in here. Uh, for this wind tunnel, there's a turntable on the floor and a, and a sting system comes out the floor and the whole aircraft model mounts on the end of the sting and we can measure all three forces and all three moments at various angles of attack and yaw and, um, and roll. Um, the, the speed in here, the maximum speed is about 70 meters per second or about 150 miles an hour. Uh, we measure the speed using this here, which is a pitot probe, exactly the same type of probe that you have on an aircraft to measure the aircraft speed. So this ribbon we remove before flight. We're in the working section still, but we want the flow quality in here to be as good as possible. Um, so we get good flow quality by having a settling chamber, which is where the flow speed is the, is the lowest value. In the settling chamber, the flow disturbances die down, and then the flow is accelerated through the contraction to maximum speed in the working section. So I'll go walk inside the settling chamber. This wind tunnel is a closed return wind tunnel, so the flow goes round in a loop. Uh, this is the first diffuser leg, and at the end of the first diffuser leg is the first set of corner vanes. And at each corner of the wind tunnel there's a set of corner vanes, and these turn the flow through 90 degrees. I'll now walk down towards the diffuser vanes. You can see how big the tunnel's becoming compared to my height. Flow goes in and through the corner veins, turns into that direction. We're, out, we're, we're now outside, still inside the wind tunnel loop though. Behind me here, this part is the first diffuser leg, which I've already walked down towards the first set of corner veins. There's the second set of corner veins over there where the flow turns around 90 degrees again. And the circular housing in the wind tunnel is where the fan is. And that fan will absorb about a megawatt of power. The flow then goes down the return leg back towards the working section. We're underneath the working section and this is where we have a lot of our instrumentation, measurement and actuation systems. Behind me, this is the turntable system. Um, this is what we can use to support wind, uh, aircraft models inside the wind tunnel. So this is the cassette that rotates to give a yaw angle. Inside the cassette there's a sting system which comes out to give us pitch variation and also roll variation. The other systems underneath here include lasers, hydraulics uh, and compressed air supplies for uh, model actuation and flow generation 